Nausea and vomiting. Many treatments of chemotherapy can cause nausea and vomiting. They are the two most dreaded and unpleasant side effects that rarely become life-threatening. This video clip will show you how to manage and prevent this from happening. Not everyone who receives chemotherapy has nausea and also everyone reacts in different ways. Nausea is a subjective and unpleasant feeling in the back of your throat and stomach that may lead to vomiting. There are many words that describe nausea, including feeling heart sick, an increased amount of saliva in your mouth, lightheadedness, and a fast heart rate. Vomiting or throwing up is the act of expelling the contents of the stomach through the mouth. It may also be called emesis. Nausea is the urge to vomit. Nausea and vomiting. When can the nausea and vomiting start? Acute nausea and vomiting usually happens within minutes to hours after receiving chemotherapy. The worst of this acute vomiting most often happens after five to six days of treatment. Delayed nausea and vomiting starts more than 24 hours after chemotherapy and up to five to seven days. It is more likely that certain types of chemotherapy can cause this and your doctor will inform you of this and proper medication given. Anticipatory nausea and vomiting occurs in some patients after they have had several courses of treatment. These triggers such as odor, example an alcohol swab that may later have nausea and vomiting associated with the smell alone. The early the anticipatory nausea and vomiting is identified, the more effective treatment may be. How long will these side effects last? Nausea can last up to two to three days after treatment, but vomiting rarely after 24 hours. Besides the chemotherapy, nausea and vomiting may be caused by other reasons other than cancer, anxiety, stress, constipation, and other medications may be a cause as well. Nausea. What an awful feeling. At my first treatment of chemotherapy, I encountered the pharmacist. She explained to me all the side effects and possible nausea that I may experience. Preventative medication was given to me as prescribed by the doctor and a prescription to go home with if I needed it. It all went well. As I left the hospital, I had the prescriptions in my hand and I thought, well, I better go get it filled and take the anti-nausea medication called Stimacil when I arrived home, just to make sure that nothing will happen. I just had time to arrive home and the nausea started. I took the medication as prescribed and waited half an hour with no result. So I decided to take another one as prescribed and again, no relief. So I rested on the couch and tried to relax. When my 16 month old daughter came home from daycare, she was anxious to see me. She said no dodo mama and she wanted to play. I had absolutely no energy and felt awful and also felt like an unfit mother. Absolutely no energy and thank goodness for my husband. I was getting weak and was not eating and decided to take another pill to see if I could get some relief. I called Info Santé as my nausea was persisting. I had suppositories of the anti-nausea medication and called to confirm that I could use them. By this time, after almost 8 hours of nausea, I used the suppositories and the nausea stopped. I was not looking forward to the second treatment three weeks later. I met with the pharmacist again and came up with a preventative plan and to take Stemacil every four hours and not wait till the nausea appears, as it is not controllable at that point. She suggested taking Stemacil every four hours, two pills, full dose, and this really made a difference. I can say the only side effect I had was that I was more tired as the pills do make you a little sleepy, so I slept instead of being nauseated. I had no other choice, I had to accept the fact that I had to take them to get through the course of treatments. My suggestion to you 
would be to always have your medication with you in pill form or suppositories. It is for sure we all react to the treatments in different ways. It is up to each individual patient to face their individual challenge as they come, as everybody reacts differently. The best ways to reduce nausea and vomiting. In most cases, the side effects can be effectively controlled with preventative medication and other measures, like a warm, cozy blanket during treatment. These medications are given intravenously or orally before receiving chemotherapy. Depending on your chemotherapy protocol, your doctor will prescribe a medication before you receive the treatment to prevent nausea and will write a prescription for you if you have any nausea at home so you will have medication available for you. The most common medication to take at home is in pill form called Stematil. It may be taken every four to six hours and is also available in suppositories if vomiting persists. Your local pharmacist will explain all of this to you. What are the other measures to reduce nausea? After taking the Stematil, try and relax by taking deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Suck on ice chips and eat salted soda biscuits. These measures may help prevent nausea so that your appetite doesn't decrease and you don't become dehydrated. Other measures and tricks? A decreased appetite may lead to weight loss and poor nutrition. Smaller, more frequent meals are more beneficial. Eat slowly and try remaining seated for at least a half hour to 45 minutes after eating. Drink fluids regularly, but not during meals. Avoid fried foods or foods high in sugar. Also, you may eat your foods cool or at room temperature. Don't eat them when they are too hot. What signs and symptoms to watch for? Call the oncology department if any of the following symptoms occur. Persistent nausea for more than three days not relieved by taking your medications on a regular basis. Vomiting for more than 24 hours causing dehydration. Stronger anti-nausea medication will be prescribed by the doctor after coming to clinic and having an evaluation by nurses and doctors.